Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Some Low Grade Gamers. Here we are at episode 13. Lucky number 13. It's actually my lucky number because it's everyone else's unlucky number. That's so you. Yeah. Just want to go against the just tip. Just to put something out there because, you know, I always like to do that. In Italy, 13 is actually a lucky number. There you oh, go. There nice. you go. Dan is Italian, so... Mm, lovely. I like that a lot. So you would get cheap rent if you moved to like um, China or Japan yeah, where pain is. nobody likes to live in house number 13 because it's haunted. Yes, exactly. So you can go and get extra cheap rent. They're lovely. also not allowed to have banana plants in the backyard. Why deprive yourself of bananas? I, I don't know, but I remember when I, I know I've already gone off topic. Sorry, everybody. But I, I was a property manager for a time and I had a phone call from a new tenant saying, we didn't realise there was a banana tree in the backyard. Can you please get rid of it? Really? <laughs> Did yeah, they so explain that, why? I had, yeah, because it's, it's like against the... It's it, yeah, it's like um, a superstition thing. It's yeah. bad luck and but blah, blah, blah. So I had to fair enough. tell them... I'll call. You obviously got to bring it up with the owner. But rang the owner. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm not taking. I'm not really get rid of my bananas. So. I oh, know. So what happened? They moved out. No, this, this. As far as I know, they're still there. So. I just, that just got terrible luck. Burned some sage. I guess. So, I did have to go there once because their oven wasn't working. Which that was, must have been the bananas. Well, it's that really weird. Bananas. Because they'd been in there four months and I went there and I was like, okay, has anybody played with the oven? No, no, no. Have you ever used it before? Yeah, yeah, we use it all the time. I was like, okay. And then for some reason I thought I'm going to pull the oven out, right, because I, I'm a different type of property manager. I'm hands-on. So I ripped, the, well, I, ripped, I ripped the oven out and... As I had the oven out, I was like, this switch is off. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, you can't. Makes Either you've op- you've t- pulled the oven out and turned the switch off for some unknown reason, or you've never used the oven before. He goes, no, I think we've used the oven. I think, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they never used so, the oven. Well, yeah. actually, yeah, there's not the like a huge amount of ovens. And, well, in Southeast Asia, at least, they don't use ovens, so. I don't, Maybe I don't it just know. It was, it was odd. They also put cling wrap over the smoke detectors. Oh, that's smart. Those things are annoying. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyways, this is a uh, gaming podcast, not a uh, banana rental banana superstition podcast. So uh, I think we're going to uh, move on to some uh, games. I did oh. like that story, though. Thanks. To- yeah, good story, though. Nice introduction there. Uh, you guys know who we are by this stage. If you don't, I am Tom and this is Laura. Hello. And we are some kind of gaming. And this is Dan over here and he is the low-grade gamer. I am. How are we all? We're very good, thank you. Very good, thank you, Dan. How are you? I'm good. Just chilling. Doing my yep. thing. No more broken ovens. No more broken ovens, just uh, working on iDigitalGames.com, the uh, favourite place for digital games in USA, Australia, New Zealand, UK, and Canada. Ooh, Canada, I like it. Sounds like you've expanded. We have. And they will continue to do so, I am sure. Yep. We've got a couple of uh, points on our agenda today. So we're first... We're going to talk about the uh, recent release of Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, it actually kind of blew me away just how big this thing is. I, I mean, I knew that it was a pretty large IP for PlayStation, but whew, whew, it's, it really is everywhere at the moment. Then we are going to discuss the uh, shutting down of some certain uh, online stores from Nintendo, namely the Wii U and the 3DS ones. Uh, that's everyone seems to have an opinion on this topic so uh, we're going to have an opinion as well and then finally as of this recording about an hour ago street fighter 6 was announced so i thought we'd jump in early there and talk a wee bit about that one anyways 
let's kick things off with Horizon Forbidden West. Firstly, I just want to say I wish we lived in Sydney. I know. Because they have a giant statue of an awesome machine like sitting at the Sydney Opera House. How did they get that? That's epic. Isn't that cool? There's also one in uh, some station in London that recently appeared, like a little bit after. Is there one in America or is there just those two? Oh, surely there's some in the States. Yeah, nobody, you'd imagine. Nobody cares about the States, all right? <laughs> Maybe all, there's one in Japan then. It's all about Sydney. There is, yeah, which is weird. Let's be honest, it's strange. It is <laughs> strange, but it's awesome. That is, from oh, my I'm memory... Sorry. That is the first time something from, like, a gaming IP has been that, and and uh, this might be controversial, but it's not a massive IP in terms of, you know, everybody knows what Pokemon is, as an example. Right? Yep. Mm. So having that in the middle of Sydney, in front of the Sydney Opera House, that's just awesome. I love that. Oh, yeah. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm 100%. going to buy a it PlayStation. Just, it just goes to show, yeah, how big it is. And, again, I was pretty shocked. Well, so, not many gaming franchises have massive statues outside the Sydney Opera House, so I just thought it was, like, really random, like, in a good way. Oh, definitely. But definitely random. Yeah. No, oh, I, I, I saw yeah. a picture of it, and I didn't realise it was Sydney, and then I was like, oh, wait. So the thing that got me in, you didn't realize that Sydney, there's the there's the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House in the background. Yeah, but I was looking at the I was looking at the statue and then I averted my eyes from the statue and yeah. I, I soon realized. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. It is extremely intelligent marketing because the first thing that drew me to the Horizon franchise or the first game, I guess, uh, Zero Dawn, was the monster designs, the machines. They are so cool mm -hmm. so cool i saw that one of the probably the first trailer or something for zero dawn and i was just like oh yeah this is what i want like i need this game it was uh, uh what are they called the real big giraffe looking ones in particular yeah oh god i can't remember it's been a while since i played zero dawn <laughs> know what i'm talking about i i know what it, i definitely know what it looks like as i have watched a hell of a lot of trailers uh, yeah. As one thing that uh, this is this is going to sound like a plug, but it's not. Tall neck. One, it's tall one, neck. What's it called? A tall neck. Well, it's actually a really uninspired name. Yeah, that's, <laughs> let's call it the giraffe. The yeah, giraffe right. of yeah. horizon. The giraffe is actually a bit more exciting. The giraffe with the disc on its head. Those things are yeah. so cool. But I've been First watching time I saw one in game. heaps of trailers, and yeah. Uh, because we, we have a YouTube channel where it's just trailers, which we use to, I think, you know, pictures are good. A picture tells a thousand words, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. if I'm buying a new game, I think a video is just so much more impactful. So we've, oh, we've started embedding uh, trailers and that sort of thing on the website to make yeah, you know, it easier for customers to decide what they want to do. And well, it's hard I, to know what a game is about if you don't know anything about it. I always watch trailers. Mm. Yeah, so do I. And, and instead of people leaving the website, all they have to do is scroll down slightly and they've got it there under the main photo. And yeah, it, makes, it, it also makes the site faster, so you're all welcome. But the uh, I, I literally have watched three or four different trailers and Horizon Zero Dawn currently is the only game with multiple trailers up just because I've gotten a little bit obsessed. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I want to hear your, uh, your journey currently on the latest one because I really want to jump into the older one. It, it is available yeah. on, on the new one isn't, but the old one's available on Steam and PlayStation, which is, is really cool that Sony are... Uh, yeah doing that with more titles now they did it with god of war as well which was surprising mm -hmm. i did i agree i didn't see that happening especially. final fantasy 7 remake is on there now as well i believe yeah so uh, i think i think zero dawn was one of the one of the firsts though to be honest yeah that was their first little kick off into the pc realm which is 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's where I played Zero Dawn. I played it on the PC. And now I have purchased Forbidden West on the PS5. And, ooh, that thing looks nice. Like, that's the first thing you will notice about Horizon Forbidden West is that it looks amazing. Like, possibly the best looking game of all. It's just be- it's beautiful. What is it with Horizons? Forza it's Horizon, just- Horizon, <laughs> yeah, True. Horizon Forbidden West. They, I, I honestly, yeah, they're the two best looking games of all time. Horizon is like code Fight word me. for epic. Horizon is code word for looks epic. Mm-hmm. So, how Not many hours like. have you put into this game so far? Okay, I have. <laughs> I stayed up until about six thirty in the morning yesterday because uh, playing. Yep. Playing that game is all better than sleep. <laughs> okay. I have put just over, I, I think it's about five or six hours. So I'm not hugely into it yet. I no. haven't actually even entered the Forbidden West. That's okay. There's this isn't this. You've you've gone in enough to for me to ask my question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so the reason I haven't gotten into the Forbidden West yet is because. Uh, the first game is the story. The story is is there in the main quests, but there is a absolute uh, a lot of characters. I was going to say a ton of characters that you will never come across if you don't do any of the side quests. And there's so much lore and history and just. And you want to know these things. Like that's the type of game it is. It really just. You want to know more. And there's so many side quests that are available already in the first little area before you actually enter the Forbidden West that I've just been completing. Yeah, I've been side questing already. Okay. Anything that I can do, I do at the time when I can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got to craft fast traveling packs. So if I have to craft less of them, I do everything around where I am and Mm. then I move on and I just haven't moved on yet. Uh, I know people have put five hours in and a well into the map. Uh, That's just not how I play this particular game. I I was playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla that way before I realized that I would literally be 80 by the time I finished it. Mm. If I keep doing that. (laughs) So now I'm just like, I'm just going to go story quests now. Fair enough. Well, and then I can go back because it's a different yeah. game, obviously. That's the that's the good thing about a lot of these games, like Horizon, like Assassin's Creed. You can put, I, I think the main story is roughly, uh, actually, I'm just, I'm just totally guessing here, the main story of Forbidden West, I have no idea. Let's say it's 40 hours for the main story. You could easily put in 120 hours just doing side quests, leveling mm-hmm. up missions, you know, getting A pluses on everything. Uh, there is also like a side game, uh, kind of like uh, Gwent in The Witcher. I was just thinking of that comparison. Yep, exactly like that. So there's like, you know, there's 10 hours right there if you get really into that. So there's just so much. There's so much to do and so much to see. It's just so nice. It's just, it's just beautiful. Dan, ask your question. I'm sorry I got sidetracked. So you were actually right, by the way. It's 40 hours. Whoa, oh, nice. Was that based Nailed on the it. first one? Uh, no. I spent, I think I spent a little bit over 40 hours, maybe 50 hours doing all the side quests in the first one. So the first one's, you, I think you complete that in like 16 to 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, with if you're just doing the main story. Yeah. Just did some quick Googling. But no, one thing yeah. that I have heard about this game. Please. Now, I don't want you to, to get fired up about this. Oh, I'm going to get fired up. That's what people say. Fire them before up. Before you get fired up. Do yeah. it. This is going to be like the it. last episode. No, I the, know. I've heard Red. that there are some significant frame drops. Okay. On... on the PlayStation 5. Now, I don't know yep. if that's people expecting too much or if that's fair and reasonable assessment. So it's really interesting because the only time I've ever come across 
anything like that is during cut scenes. That is interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't experienced any frame rate drops during gameplay or anything like that. Uh, well, that's good. It can be pretty fast paced, uh, especially if you're fighting a whole bunch of machines at the same time. I, it wouldn't surprise me if there were. But yeah, just during cutscenes, uh, the main thing I noticed was there was a couple of assets that loaded in and out during a cutscene, and I thought that was a bit strange, especially because it is a cutscene. You know, it's just there, it, like nobody's moving around or doing anything. The I I didn't want to bring this up because I do love the game, but I had to restart it almost instantaneously. Really? Yeah, I got a game breaking glitch instantly oh crap what happened so the first thing you do is you you meet an old friend blah 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 you give him a focus cool let's go uh you jump off of a cliff into some water because that is one of the huge new mechanics in this is underwater exploration Mm -hmm. so the world is just you know twice as large and all all it looks nice just let me and this is why i encountered this glitch actually because i spent like five to ten minutes just like diving into this like little pool of water it's like puddle that you dive into i was like whoa this looks so cool just swimming through it and i was like this is awesome going up out of the water looking at the surface cool as back down (laughs) and then i was like okay it's time to continue let's go went around cool you know you find this machine it's it's been killed by some humans you got to inspect it wouldn't let me inspect it and i was like what's going on here then i realized my friend wasn't with me anymore so I went back. Oh, my God. He was probably out frolicking with Roland. What he was doing was swimming in the water just in place. I'd spent oh, so long in the water, he was just... Stuck there, too. He was just... He's like, actually, yeah, you're right. This is great. Let's just do this. Right? <laughs> yep. I am enjoying um, this. So yeah. I had to click... I had to just, you know, restart from later save, which was actually after I'd gotten out of the water. And that reset him and he popped in and I was able to continue on and inspect the machine that I needed to. Okay, uh, so it wasn't it wasn't removing your save file to fix it or anything like that. It was just no, jump I out. So a slight it. a slight inconvenience and then you didn't have any issues. It was a soft, it was a soft reset, yes. Uh I have heard other reports of similar things. Uh I think That is going to put a big dint on it winning game of the year, unfortunately. Uh, Not that the Game Awards really seem to care about glitches and stuff for nominations. Well. Anyway, we talk about that game too much. Uh, (laughs) uh, Do you know know what? I have to add it to the 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 schedule. I have to add it to the schedule this week. I know I forgot to bring it up earlier, but I need to add it in. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Horizon is fantastic, and you guys should all buy it 100%. It's beautiful. It runs really nice, except for those cut scenes and that one glitch. And just the, the world design is it's bang on. It's one of those games that you should definitely play the first one before you play the second one. I know that much. Yeah, it's very much a sequel. It is almost like the first one was there with this one in mind. Like they always knew. Mm. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if, if this one's here for the third one. Like it's probably, you know, trilogies, things come in trilogies. Mm-hmm. So I assume that that's kind of their take on it. And that's what they're, they're going to do. It's very much a continuation. A lot of questions left unanswered after Zero Dawn. And hopefully they get answered in this game. Hmm. And yeah. lucky enough, people Absolutely. can play it on PC as well. Yes, they can. When do you guys think this one is going to come to PC? Well, that's going to take a while. Uh, I'd say uh, I'd say we're at least six months to a year. Uh, oh, yeah. really? I think longer. Oh, yeah. I reckon like a year. Yeah, I, yeah. I reckon it's potentially yeah. longer, but I, I'd say I'd say to keep up their momentum mm-hmm. uh, because exactly. part of they the don't problem want people. Like, Lose interest. Yeah. Yeah, and, but when did God of War release? Yeah, that when was but I think that was because Sony finally decided to start doing it more, if that makes sense. I think 
no. now that they've set this precedent, I got a feeling we're going to start seeing it more and more with their IP. So uh, I think now they're potentially prepared, whereas previously they weren't. If that makes so sense. So it was a bigger deal with the God of War thing. Yeah. So I think but before it was sort of like, hey, you know what would be a good idea? Yeah, what's that, Bob? I reckon we should put it on there. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Bob. And then they did it. That yep. was exactly Fair the enough. conversation that happened at PlayStation. Uh, yep. I, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, Bob said it. Yeah. <laughs> good old Bob. Thanks, Bob, Thanks, for bringing Bob. it to PC. It's really nice. It makes it more accessible. Uh, I do have one thing to add, speaking of the PC versions. Neither of you guys have played Horizon, have you? I feel like no. that's a very one-sided really, conversation. Yeah, I really wish that I had and that I wasn't in the room when you started the second one last night. But if you haven't played the first one and you are going to watch someone play the second one, do don't. not watch them start the game. Don't mm-hmm. watch them boot it up. It yeah. is literally a recap of the whole first one. Yeah. You know, when you're watching like a anime and then it has like a recap of the previous episode, that's what it was like. And I was sitting there and I was like, ah, I was thinking about going to bed and I was like, I should have done it 30 seconds ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a bit of a, there is a lot more to know though. So you're not, yes. it, it's, it's, it's still worth I'm still going to play it. I, we actually downloaded the first one because Laura's like, whoa, look at that cool ranger chick. She's got awesome hair. Like, I was so into that game when I saw trailers of it. I was yeah. like, that is epic. And then I played it. Yeah. So anyways, that's okay. What I was going to say is that we've got the first one on PC and uh, moving on to the PlayStation 5 for this one is quite interesting because it is quite, the combat is quite stealthy and you have to be quite accurate uh, with your arrows and those kind of things. So it is, it, it's quite a difficult combat system. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely not the easiest one. It's, it's quite involved as well. There's lots of things you can do. And I found it quite difficult going to the PlayStation to play it because aiming is just not as accurate with a controller. Yeah, it's just not. It's, it is just not. And I found it, yeah, I found it so much easier on the PC to play Zero Dawn. Uh, I didn't play Zero Dawn on the PlayStation, so I can't really talk about any of the other comparisons apart from the fact that it looks way better on the PC, especially if you've... Well, that's the nature, isn't it, of... Yeah, especially if you've got a a, a nice graphics Mm. card like we do. But, yeah, it's just... I just just find it a little bit more challenging, which isn't a bad thing. Aiming is always harder on... I had to turn the down controller. the sensitivity of the, the controller because I, I need to do, do that it. on yeah my switch and stuff too. Yeah. I, I'm very uh, controller based. I struggle with keyboard and mouse. I'm just I'm just not good. I try. I find moving around easier on a controller, yep. but mm-hmm. aiming with the mouse is so mm. much easier because it's like. Yeah, when you go into it's a first person. It's more in person. tune with your movements. Yes. Mm. Whereas I find on my controller, sometimes you'll just push it like a hair of a millimeter and it and the your aim at things are woo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely like that. I agree with you 100%. It, yeah. Moving is easier with a mm. controller, but aiming, like when you pull back on your bowstring, it goes into like a first person type mode. Mm. and that is way harder, which is why first-person shooters are better played on a PC, mm-hmm. better, better reaction times, all that stuff. So it's not surprising. Well, you can tell us in, like, Overwatch and things. It's like I feel like I can tell when people are on, like, a PC, like, exactly reaction time and aiming, like, getting a headshot so much easier on a mm. on a computer than with a controller. Oh, yeah, there's no, there's no doubt. But about. isn't there little dongle things you can get for your controller? What do you mean by dongle? I think there's little things that you can get for your, like, aim assist. They're called, like, aim assist. Yeah, so you can get little, um, they're like little foam sections that sit underneath your thumbsticks. Yeah. Um, Which, when we ran the low-grade gamer, we they, the PlayStation 5 one was actually the most popular aim assist kit that we, yeah. uh, we stocked. And, yeah, they're like little foam rings that go underneath the... Um, joysticks and yep. mm-hmm. they've got different uh, firmness to them 
So depending on which, how hard you want it and all that sort of stuff, you can change it. Uh, okay. For me, again, I've got an Elite Series 2 control and you can tension up the sticks. So, oh, yeah, it's kind of nice. Yeah, that's, I, I it, like, if I know, if I use a normal controller, I'll struggle really bad. If I use that one, I'm okay because it's tensioned and set up the way I, I like it. But I, I agree, it's harder to uh, aim with the controller. I, I was testing a pro controller on Pokemon. I know it's different, but I found myself going all over the joint when mm -hmm. that's what is like it with me when I'm because I'm streaming Minecraft at the moment and when I first I feel like every game is different as well so you yes. almost have to get used to the system in every game but like people were just like oh you know like she's not very good at aiming and it's honestly just so sensitive like mm. I'm trying to aim for like my face if for those watching on YouTube, this I'm doing some actions. So I'll move it like a tiny millimeter and then it's like, boo. And then when, when I'm trying to aim, I go like this, boo, boo, boo. And then I'll get it in the middle. I've got to like readjust it so many times. It's not great for combat. Yeah, there is generally an in-game like option to turn down. I didn't actually know that. So I'm going to have to do that's, that. That's what I do rather than buy the, the kits and stuff. I just, most games these days will have a, sensitivity option that you can just turn down so it's it's easily get aroundable maybe the pro controller is just like a bit more because is that the one that you noticed uh, it being particularly sensitive on I, Dan, yeah, I, I struggled with it it was pissing me off to be quite honest maybe this yeah yeah there you go maybe it is that uh while we're on controllers the dual sense controller ooh, yeah it that's what i wanted to ask how is it with so okay the PC is is better for aiming, all right? Let's let's move that yep. out of the way. In terms of immersion, oh, mm -hmm. tell ooh. me tell me more. That I haven't controller. used a PS5 controller yet. Well, I have. I played FIFA oh, for like 10 minutes. Now. But that's Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's not enough time, yeah. That's nothing. So how no. how immersive is it compared to the PC? So the the coolest thing for me was I was under under the cover of a building. It was raining. There's a storm outside. And I walked out into this storm and I could feel the rain. Wow. That's that cool. for me was just like, I was like, whoa, this is this is pretty cool, isn't it? I really like that. Feel and then in what way though? Uh, you could so like what's the controller to be? Technical? It was raining on my hands. Like I could it was oh does that make sense it's through I, yeah, vibrations. Yeah, yeah through vibrations yeah yeah 100 percent. but yeah it was and it wasn't just like going like just vibrating no. randomly it was like there's all sorts of different vibrations little that droplets it does. that were falling onto this controller and it was just it was so cool and the fact that it's got a little speaker in it as well so um oh. i don't know in in the last of us when you flick your torch on it the, the click comes through the controller, stuff like that. And some of the some of the machine noises come through the control, I'll be playing right, and then I'll just hear like, Meh, and I'm like, what? Like, what was that? <laughs> but it's just like the noises come from my controller. But it's so close to you. Yeah, and it's like even if you've got it, you know, down near your feet or whatever, you know, I don't know you might have really long arms. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but even then, I use my still <laughs> just playing <laughs> yeah exactly but you'd still be like whoa what was that and that really adds a nice level of suspense to it because mm -hmm. as i mentioned it is like a quite a stealthy game and don't let that turn people off i'm not a stealth orientated person either i in fact i don't like it at all it's pretty satisfying but it is really nice it's really well done in this game it's not like <sighs> You don't have to be, but it pays to be. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, you've got to try. You've just got to try it. Um, and then the uh, the triggers yeah, as that's well. What I, that's literally what I was just about to ask. What happens when you do the bow? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you can feel the, it, the bowstring draw. Same as in Assassin's Creed Origin. I mean, Valhalla. Yeah, the same thing. You mm -hmm. can feel Yeah, it. you can feel the tension of the bowstring. Yeah, it's the like awesome. Yeah, pull it, the tighter yeah. it feels. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the button gets harder to push 
yeah, the, the further you push it in, just like a, a real bow would be. You know, it's easy to pull mm. back 10 centimeters, but, you know, if you're going to draw that thing back like a meter, like it's it's going to get and way harder. it has harder. like a real slight vibration to not like very strong, but just enough to simulate like tension. Yeah, like someone struggling to pull back on the string. Yeah, it's yeah. just kind of like, mm, that's what it's like. That's awesome. Like, uh, that's absolutely okay. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. That yeah. That controller is. It's something so, else, Dan. Sure. I know you don't like the old um the symmetrical joysticks. You would love the. It's not that I was, It's not that I never liked it. It's just that I think my hands, my hands are quite big, so the Xbox controller has always felt a little bit nicer. I feel like, I feel like the Dual Sense is bigger than any of the Dual the Dual Shocks. Yeah, I, I, would I was agree. about to say that. Yep. It looks, yep. it looks meatier. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain it is bigger. Yeah, I'm, I'm also have, quite. Have sure. human hands gotten bigger, or is it just because controllers have grown in size exponentially <laughs> since the early days? They're, My hands had realized that older people like to play games too. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and especially something like PS5. more money than children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we spend more money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've honestly seen nothing but Forbidden West stuff for the last days on all of social media. The original sold just over 20 million copies, which is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Like, that's that's quite large, but it's not, like, it's not. That's not huge. huge. Mm. You know what? It, like, it is, it is huge, but it's not. Huge. Yeah, I, it's, it's hard to explain. Hmm. Do you know? Do you guys know what I'm saying though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like, um, yeah, it's a large number, but not as large as some other releases. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. amount of uh, young, young and old, mm. I have seen dressing up in cosplay to yeah, go as Aloy. pick up their copy. Has been insane. It's like all yep. over How my cool feed. Yep. Every girl with red hair is cosplaying as Aloy at the moment. It's awesome. Good on yeah. them. Like, Rangers need more representation. Yeah, you're so right. I That's think the- Supernova is going to have heaps of Aloys. I oh, agree. Yeah. 100%. That's a con in Australia for those people that aren't aware. Um, just quickly, speaking of how uh redheads need more representation uh horizon the first one and forbidden west does a really really good job of representing everyone that's Uh, good yeah so we're in a post-apocalyptic world uh, with these machines running around uh it's both like obviously very technologically advanced with the machines you know they just run around as creatures and also not humans are still living in small tribes and you know worshiping the sun and this type of stuff and it just does a really really good job of being diverse there i am pretty certain there is a character in there that you will relate to no matter who you are and it's yeah i think it's fantastic it's actually been review bombed because it's unrealistically diverse which i think is a pile yeah. steaming oh, pile of well the hell does that mean i don't don't let's not let's not even get into that oh because God. it is literally a steaming pile of crap yeah that is the stupidest thing i've ever I did, yep. i did um, see it was being review bombed and yep. it's it deserve it. it's fantastic it's, well, what is it is a if you review bomb oh, something who would be upset that, there is something there is you need to go see moments. somebody I'll give yeah, you a number exactly. of some people that can help you. Yeah, 100%. No, seriously, it's I, it blows my mind how people can even think that. Yeah, dude, I, I don't know. I think, cool. I think this game is going to be a, a PS5 seller. If you can get your hands yeah. on one, it's just, it's definitely a system seller of a game. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, it's uh, also interesting. And quite unfortunate that it's going to be coming out in the same year as Breath of the Wilds again. Uh, the original Horizon Zero Dawn lost out Game of the Year to Breath of the Wild. And oh, maybe we're going to have another race. Yeah, I think we're going to have a rematch. Wow. Yep. 
to be honest. So I will we'll, say, we'll, I think we'll PlayStation 5s have been easier to come by. Now, some people may shoot me for that, but... No, I, I agree. There is a, a little bit of an influx in the market at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I, I've literally, literally had the chance to buy three since our last... Yep. Uh, our last podcast and the only reason yep. i haven't bought them is because i'm trying to be responsible with money but i've literally gotten all the way to the end and then pulled out yep. <gasps> so just, dan life is short i well uh, make sure you stick around to these podcasts because in i believe about two weeks time we will be discussing the new gran turismo which is coming out mm. and we do know that dan likes his cars mm. So we will be discussing that down the line. There is a lot to discuss there. But uh, maybe, maybe that could, uh, maybe that could tempt you with a uh, Horizon Forbidden West and Gran Turismo. Maybe Elden Ring could tempt you. That's also on Xbox, though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's it. That's an everywhere really title. Play, I, I want to play Spider Man. To be honest, I'm desperate to play Miles Morales. Yeah, so, that is another game where I was up till six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning because I actually didn't is- eat dinner twice while playing through Miles Morales because I chose to play that game instead. It, it got to like, yes, yeah, 6.30 in the morning. So I hadn't eaten since like, geez, lunchtime the day before. And I was like, I am both hungry and tired now. Damn it. Bye. Bye, world. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but the game is that good. Yeah. I, um, I, I really think that these are going to be system sellers for the PS5 and it deserves to be. Guerrilla Games is awesome. Uh, let's just wrap this topic up by saying, or, well, I guess it's a question. Have you guys seen any posts by any of the other PlayStation studios in the last week by any chance? Take that silence as a no. So Insomniac, uh, sticking with the, the Spider-Man theme, Insomniac Games, who, of course, created the uh, fantastic Ratchet & Clank series, they posted a picture of the, the classic Aloy with the pterodactyl thing above her head, that, that uh, Forbidden West picture, except it was Rivet, who is Ratchet's counterpart, and with congratulations, Guerrilla Games, you know, so you know, Ratchet and Clank is in that world. And then Naughty Dog Studios posted a picture of uh, Aloy back-to-back with... Um, Ah, uh, the name escapes me. What's her name from The Last of Us? Oh, the girl? Yeah. The young girl? Yeah. I didn't play that game, but yeah. I know... Well, she, she's about. older in The Last of Us. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, Aloy and Ali back-to-back, both looking bad ass, might I add. Two awesome, really strong female leads there. And, yeah, saying congratulations, Gorilla Games. So I just thought that was really cool. That is mm. awesome. Yeah, because, you know, if if this game sells ps5s that means both naughty dogs and insomniac's next games are going to sell more so it just it's 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 smart on everyone's behalf to support each other you know the better everyone does the better each individual does and it's just really wholesome man i love it, is it. wholesome you don't like see that playstation often. family yeah you honestly don't see it often enough and I, I i really enjoyed it i think it was quite nice actually hmm. any anybody else got anything else to add before we move on to the next one just, no. just one thing, please. Roland is now here. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. This is the topic there was Dan new, wanted to add. Yeah. There was yeah. a new patch that just released. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's a so, considerable one, from my understanding as well, Dan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll run over this one briefly because there's not much. There's on, there's not much in it. It's they've fixed a whole bunch of bugs. Roland yep. the Butcher is finally there. I managed to finish the campaign because of that, which is nice. awesome. Congrats. Thank Good you. Good job. It's only been here. But um, oh look, there's, there's still a couple of glitches. Um, uh-huh. The odd one, though, and I, I would say this is how it should have been released in the first place. So the glitches yep. that are there now, I would, I would say, are acceptable day one glitches. Mm-hmm. Everything else has been uh, not good and they should have picked up their socks earlier. But if you do have Cyberpunk, haven't been able to get through, now is the time to make sure you've updated your software because there is a massive patch that has just come out and has fixed. uh, The only small glitches that I have is like a 
there was a small bar that got stuck on the screen for some mm-hmm. reason, and then after a cut scene, it went away. And then something else very similar to that happened, and that that's sort of it. So you know, glitches that you would be little visual ones. Okay what about the mechanics with- though? Have have they been like the the Grand Theft Auto style police system and? So there the was police a system seems to be, have been changed dramatically. Yep. So okay. before wow. I used to be able to get in a car and drive like, I don't know, 10 metres and they yeah, were stuck. Exactly. Uh, yep. They're still not as intense as what Grand Theft Auto's cops are, uh, but I sort of think that lines up with the story, if that makes sense, and nobody really cares yep. uh, about how people struggling and coping and all that sort of stuff. So they sort of, yeah, whatever. Okay, we didn't get them. We didn't get them. So I think that all that all makes sense. I did find it weird, though, that it basically stripped my guy of his perks. The and, update did. Yes, and his pants. Oh. Oh, so, oh. oh okay. Mm, yes. Get a bit spotty, you said. I had a... I had a I had a picture. I did screenshot it. I was going to send it to you guys, and, that, and I've forgotten. But so I will do that later. But I, I did yes, take, a, take a screenshot of of the junk, and yeah. um, uh, I just I thought Tom would enjoy it. And, oh yeah, because yeah. you can use your junk, can't you? Yeah, yeah. It was just it was just so random to just jump in and like, where's my pants gone? And why don't I have any of my perks? You, you still had all the like you. you for some reason, what it did is it seemed to remove them all but give you the number still, if that makes sense. So if you had 70 perk points that you've already used, mm-hmm. the perks disappeared, but the points, you got the points back? Yeah, you got the oh, points back. Good. Okay, that's all right. So that's you right. didn't you lose just, anything yeah. from it, and it maybe was good for somebody like me who didn't set it up right at the start. Mm-hmm. I wasn't happy with the setup at the start, so... There you go. That works. Happy yeah. Yeah. It, so no, it no big out. deal. No. Yeah. So we're it worked to... out. And I just had to get some pants. Yeah, you were able to recover your pants. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I got my I got my pants on, which was good. So that's really the most important thing, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. So I just I just want to say on this subject while we're there, I will never buy this game. Because <laughs> even if it does work, I think the whole situation it's the was principle. A, it, it, it is. You say that like it's like I'm being a little bit of a Karen, but it's <laughs> it's totally fair. Like I think it's fair. We all deserve better than this. Mm, and I understand. I understand it's not the developer's fault. You're on like strike. it's 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 not the individual's fault, is what mm. I should say. Uh, CD Projekt Red pushed it and added elements last second and all this stuff, but it, it's not good enough. And I don't care that it works now, a year and a half later, or whenever it is. It's too little, too late. And I, I, I am not going to judge you if you want to go out, Dan. I know you, you've obviously bought it, you played it. That's fine. That's chill. Totally fair. I will never support that title. It's not. I'm not never supporting CD CD Project again. I probably invest in their next game if they choose. You know, if they bring it out of Witcher Four, I'm buying that day one, hundred percent. But I'm never buying Cyberpunk. I yeah, and I think, I, look, I think it's. I think it's a fair enough point. And the only reason I really bring it up is if you were at the same point as me and you played it I, I bought it originally because i went jesus how bad could it possibly be yeah you know what i mean like are these reports real i was that shocked i guess that it was a problem this vast uh-huh. and um i picked it up for 15 bucks so i was i was okay with that and yep, that's not much of money lost yeah and yeah, and yes, I got stuck. I literally, an NPC would not rock up. Roland, we've spoken about him every single week. He owns a butcher This will be the final Cyberpunk. week, though. Yep. And Roland, the Roland saga has been put to rest. Mm-hmm. It is yes. over. Honestly, so, I'm kind of glad. 
Uh, so I'm that's all I wanted to talk about with Cyberpunk is, yeah, the, the patch was has brought out, it seems to have fixed any serious glitches. So if you've got it and you have been stuck, just do the update and jump back in if you want to finish a game that you've already bought. That's my... Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. There you go. Fair enough. There you go. Cyberpunk works, everyone. All right, let's move on to our next topic of discussion, our next begin. So the 3DS and the Wii U eShops have been announced to be closing down. Mm. What ever, Again, I said this in the intro, everyone and his dog has an opinion on this. Uh, I think it's fair enough. It was huge on Twitter, a big, big explosion over there. A lot of people aren't happy about it. Laura, what do you think? Well, it's just the way it goes, isn't it? Like, as time goes on and, you know, companies want to work, focus on the things that they're doing now and improving those rather than maintaining systems and things that are in the past, not many people are probably using them anymore, you know. It's kind of like when Blockbuster closed down. Oh, yeah. I was actually thinking about that comparison. It's just the way it goes. Hmm. Okay, Dan, what's your take on it? Yeah, look, I, I think people are overreacting in this situation okay. in, in some ways. So I think there's some points for and against. Number one, I don't think they're technically giving people enough time. So, yes, you've got till March 2023, but if your credit card, if you're purchasing with a credit card, needs to be done of May this year, or if you're using mm -hmm. eShop funds, needs to be done by August. Yeah. So, basically, after August, if you have $0 in your account, you can't do jack anyway. So, yeah. I, I think saying... March 2023 is a bit of bull and not the It's right. misleading. Yeah. yeah, that is misleading. Yeah. Uh, look, a 1,000 games in total are going to be dropped. Mm -hmm. So That's and the some of digital those, exclusive only, correct? Yeah, so, but a lot of people think that, so it's not digital exclusive. That's mm -hmm. the thing. People are, so one of the big comments is, this wouldn't happen with physical games and yada, yada, yada. But there is a total of 400 physical games that will not be playable after this is complete. Oh, okay. How, how so? They use those servers to run the games and other bits and pieces. So I don't know the full ins and outs of that yet, but it is... Something to think about if, for example, you're into cloud gaming with, say, the Nintendo oh, yes. Switch. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that will be all gone. Yeah. So, what was the what was one of the latest games? I think we spoke about it last week. That was coming out. That is technically a cloud cloud based Switch game. Kingdom Hearts is the yeah. latest one. So that that yep. would be. Uh, from my Not understanding, if, if they did the same thing, that it would be it would be cold as well. So oh, yeah, hundred. Yeah. Not that there's cloud gaming on the 3ds, but no, 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 no. But it's it's physical games that use the servers yeah. and other bits and pieces. So look, I, I think it's fair oh, enough. Wait, wait. No, no. So we we're talking about Assassin's Creed, um, the trilogy, the, the Ezio trilogy, and the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. Sorry that you had to. The cartridge has one of those games, one of the games in the trilogy, and then you have to download the other two from the shop. That's Downloads, that's what download is about. okay. Yeah, if it's if something's downloaded on it, you can still play it. Yeah, yes. So, look, I think overall we'll be able to re-download as well. Uh, well, we think so. If history is anything to tell us, you can still re-download games that you've already got uh, on the Wii. And that mm. server is, is down now. So you are able to do that. So logic states that you will be able to re-download games. That yeah, that's the common thought there. is that you'll, you'll be able to yeah. still re-download your stuff. So, uh, so well, I, it should be like 
Oh yeah, yeah. That would be 100%. so stupid if they took that away. Like, come on, come on. 100%. Yeah, they, no, that's not going. That's because nah. you've already paid for those. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah and, but and I mean, there'd be too many people that that would freak out, and it wouldn't cost them that much to just have that have it sitting there. That's that's the biggest thing. So we want to see more switch stuff. Everybody does. Mm-hmm. We want to see a better, co- more cohesive online experience. Yada yada yada. If them shutting down the Wii U store, 3DS store, blah, 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 will help achieve that as the end goal, uh-huh. personally, I've got no issue with it. No, uh, no, I agree. But I do think a company like Nintendo, which they do shoot themselves in the foot a lot, if you are going to be removing content from your players and your customers, you need to find a way to give it back. Yes. Well. Yeah, that is the big one at the moment, isn't it? That these some of these games are just going to be Dumb. unplayable. Yeah, exactly. There is no way to access them anymore. And that is, it is a shame. Uh, the Scott Pilgrim versus the World game was a digital only. And same thing happened, the store shut down. And it's only recently that it has got a physical copy and everyone's stoked about it limited run games did a physical copy of it and it's yeah everyone's like whoa thank god it's it's never going anywhere again we're not losing it that's just a big example of the digital gaming world yeah i I think overall you're really not technically losing anything like i don't know about you guys but my wii u has sat there unused for a very long time Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing I wanted to say. I, the 3DS is different, so I'm yeah. putting that aside for a second. The Wii U was a failure. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, it just was. I know it has its fans, and like, fair enough, that's fine. There was great games that came to that. The, 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 um, you know, the, there's a lot of good points about the Wii U, but nobody supported it. Mm. And if nobody supported it in the first place, like you can't expect Nintendo to continue no. to support it. Yeah. Uh, so. People are the virtual consoles is a big one, you know, um, just like, I'm sorry, but you weren't there at the time. So you can't expect Nintendo to be there now. Like I'm it's sure just, that they're running at a loss, like keeping some of these systems going and yep. alive. It's just a natural progression of things. Yeah, isn't it? it is. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, it's it's bad business to keep something like that open, as you said. If, yeah, I'm sure that they'd be losing money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If well, if they weren't losing money, they probably would continue doing it for another couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. If it made a uh, financial sense. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're not it depends on what the resource is doing at the end of the yeah. day. Like if if like I said earlier, if Removing it helps Nintendo move forward, yeah. then they need to do that because they're behind. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, their online right. stuff, they're behind. So whatever they yeah, need done. to do right now to start to gain ground, then they need to do. But I do disagree with what they're doing with the 64 Super Nintendo and NES stuff of having it as a monthly or yearly subscription, whatever the hell it is now. Yeah. I think the virtual console. I think the virtual console is something that if you're going to be removing it altogether, which they are, I think it's fair enough or reasonable enough to want that for the switch. I again, it's the business decision, isn't it? They want people to sign up to their subscription service uh, where they're you know guaranteed this income every month or more so guaranteed rather than you going on there, paying a couple bucks for whatever game you specifically want uh, from, from the virtual consoles. I almost prefer this subscription way. And I know I'm in the minority here. And that is purely because there's maybe some titles that I wouldn't have got a chance to play i was just gonna say that the way with the virtual um with the subscription service the way that it is it inspires you to play games that maybe you wouldn't have chosen to play before 
and find something that you might really enjoy. Whereas if you had to buy them, perhaps you wouldn't have wanted to take that risk. Yes. Which is, which is exactly. fair enough. But there, there are ways around that as well, financially speaking, if, if, and they could make more money. If Nintendo, as an example, went, okay, if you are part of the membership program, so you pay X amount per year, blah, 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 you can buy Ocarina of Time for $7 instead of 14 Mm -hmm. or instead of 24, whatever the hell they make the number, right? Mm -hmm. That way people are still incentivized to do the monthly, yearly, I can't even remember what it is anymore. Yearly, I'm going to say yearly. Yearly membership. People are still incentivized to do it because they save X amount of dollars. Plus on the red stuff. Okay. Plus they're bringing DLCs to 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 the membership you yep. got your, you got like your cloud that. saves and all that sort of stuff. Realistically, the membership doesn't cost that much, and some people are going no, to get angry no. that I said that, but I don't think it does. For a com- like, if you compare it to Netflix or Amazon, Amazon Ooh. Prime have just increased their price two dollars per month, uh, yeah. starting from next month. Netflix went from what They're, they were like eight ninety nine when they first came to Australia. They're they're at like yeah. fourteen oh, or geez. something now. Even less, I would. I think they were like five ninety nine, six ninety nine. It doesn't matter. They're way less. So, I don't think anybody can really have a massive go at Nintendo. But at the same time, I do think they should bring the virtual console back in some form, because yeah, no, fair enough. If you did those discounts, say for example, they made the game twenty four bucks, but if you remember, you only paid seven bucks. Say. So- I just think that if they killed this whole subscription service where everyone has all the games and then made them be like, ha, jokes, guess what? Now you've got to pay for these games. I think that would piss a lot of people off, including oh, myself. Yeah. They're no, in I'm saying have, them, have yeah, them available. Exactly. Yeah, they're in too deep. Have them available, right? Anyway, so keep it as it is. Sorry, I didn't explain myself. Keep it as it is, but say mm. if you wish to purchase that game and have it for good, you pay this mm-hmm. amount. So have have the yes. subscription model as it is now, but then have the ability to also purchase that game permanently. So for me that as an way, example, yeah. I, I, I want Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask on the Switch, but I want I want them. I don't want to, yeah. uh, you know, I don't want to be in that situation where, you know, I am on this subscription service and in three years, four years, whatever it is, five years, a lot of years, they decide to take that away. I, I, you know, if they had said to me, look, 20 bucks and you can purchase each game, I'd probably do it on top of the subscription service. I don't think this subscription service is going anywhere now. I no, think, it's definitely not going anywhere now, but just like hypothetically. No, in general, I don't think it's going anywhere forever. Mm. I think what Nintendo is doing. You never know, though. With No, of course. This is all just speculation. Mm. But I think what Nintendo is thinking now is that, okay, all these old shops are shut down, all these individual services for these individual consoles. We're going to have this subscription service, and we're just going to run it through. We're going to roll it over, and we're going to keep rolling it over for, through generations and that is their model now mm. rather than having yeah, individual shops for individual so systems if, and, yeah, and okay. that type I of see what you're saying. So, for example, keep it if going. I buy the, the new Nintendo Red Ribbon, I don't know, yep. in, instead okay. of the Switch, that's the new name, oh, oh, Red Ribbon. Oh, yeah. I like it. Switch Pro too, too boring for you. Well, it is <laughs> pretty boring. <laughs> right there. Okay, it makes sense now. Yep. Sorry, uh, continue. So for yeah, so for example, if they did that, you buy the red ribbon console and you continued to be able to use what you had on the Switch in terms of the subscription model. So for example, mm-hmm. the 64 games, the NES yep. games, and the SNES games move across then I don't have a problem. I think I will be very surprised if that doesn't happen. Let's put that So way. everybody here, all everybody listening to this podcast, including Nintendo, Tom has said that he is going to personally finance this and make yep, sure I Nintendo... Have, I've called right now. 
Nintendo. Tom has spoken. But no, that's a good point. I, I reckon that's not even something that I considered or have have seen considered. Yeah, I I just think that's that's the what the plan is. It makes mm. sense. It's pro consumer. It keeps people on this subscription service, which they're clearly pushing at the moment with all these DLCs they're adding. They want people there. Uh, if you want to make a, a little bit of a a comparison like it's just like microsoft pushing people towards game pass you know like that's what they don't they don't care if they're not even selling xboxes anymore you know they want they want people on game pass nintendo wants a, a little bit of that action they want people on their subscription service and i think that's what they're gonna do i, I agree I, <laughs> I think that's a fair fair point so are we or i think we're all in agreement that the shutting down of these shops is understandable and fair yes oh yeah i thought we we're gonna have a bit more drama of course it's sad when there's games that are digital only that only exist on those e-shops it's yeah. quite sad that they're going to be lost now and you're not going to be able to recover them unless for some reason they got the licensing to be released mm -hmm. on a switch which probably wouldn't happen or isn't going to happen for a lot of them at the very least probably all mm -hmm. it's a bit sad pretty but keen on remakes <laughs> oh, deja vu. <laughs> Gotta listen to last week's double episode for more. You hear this Sorry. silence coming from me? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, continue. I can feel it. Yeah. Continue, tension. Laura. It's growing. Oh, feels oh, like a cloud. A, a cloud of tension. Yep. It's it feels growing. just like it does when you pull on a bowstring on the <laughs> PS5 controller. Lovely. Like this. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Laurie. It's going to be sad. Yeah. But it's just the way that it is. It happens like it was sad. I was also sad when Blockbuster went. But, you know, it's just another thing that makes us all feel old. Yep. And we've just got to accept <laughs> that we're aging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think... I, my point with the Wii U, how people didn't support it at the time, so you can't really expect much support, is a little bit different with the 3DS because that was hugely popular. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say 75 million 3DSs out there. I could be. It's around that ballpark figure. That's a lot. Mm. And I know, like for a long time in oh, for a long time for a while there, in Nintendo Directs we were getting. 3ds announcements alongside switch mm. so it it was still popular even when the switch was young i mean i got i got a 3ds game for christmas from laura uh not that we bought that from a store we bought that second hand so nintendo is not making money on it but you know like it so people still play it like yeah. laura played Majora's mask just 3, last 3ds yeah just last year yeah. so it's People are still playing it, and it is hugely popular. But you can still get physical games. Like, the console isn't going anywhere. You no. just can't buy games on the eShop. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, but, you know, Nintendo it's don't still around playing the 3DS. That's the big thing. No. no. They don't, no, they don't yes. want anybody so right. anywhere near that thing because yep. the Switch... They've got a new thing. The Switch on. has replaced oh. the Wii U and the 3DS, which is really... Actually, it's semi-intelligent because now they've got three different models that they're running at the same time. It doesn't make any sense. Yep. But it's a smart move, really, because why have a 3DS no, and yeah. a Switch? Like, realistically, with, with, between the Switch and the Switch Lite, which, as we know, I'm not a huge fan of the Switch Lite. I don't understand it, uh, I <laughs> guess. I think... Between those two, I mean, realistically, they should remove the older Switch and just go Switch Lite and Switch OLED. I'm ranting again. But I think that like that's what they care about. They don't care, yeah. they don't they don't give a crap about 3DS. 3DS is done. Yeah, yeah. hundred percent Yeah, no, you're so right. And, and it's just again, it makes sense from the business perspective. Yeah. If the if it wasn't for the chip shortages and uh real world uh, circumstances you would see PlayStation doing the same thing. If they could cut cross play, uh, sorry, cross generation tomorrow, and there was enough PS5s out there to do that. 
They would. They, yeah. yeah. They would. Um, do I feel like the New Horizon game has been held back by that cross-gen? No. But do I think it could have been better if it wasn't? Yes, if that makes sense to you guys. I just can only imagine what that thing would have been if they didn't have to worry about putting it on a PS4. Yeah, yeah I, I, okay, I, I, I still see think you. anything yeah. that's cross-gen at the moment is hampered in some way, yes. shape, or form. I agree. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do, don't get me wrong, though. It's still probably one of the two best-looking games of all time. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's that's the biggest draw card, man. It's beautiful. And I know I'm going back to a previous topic that we're done and dusted with, but yeah, uh, the whole cross-gen thing is uh, a little interesting, and it's not ideal for PS5 owners. And my point here is, I'm sure it's not ideal for Sony either. Hmm. And Switch. Uh, Sorry, Nintendo doesn't want that. Yes. Hmm. Totally fair. Totally yeah. fair. No, All right. Anyone got anything else to add to that before we move on? Uh, final topic of discussion? I think I've put in my two cents. You've had your two cents? Yeah, yeah I felt like there was going to be a little bit more... Con- I think, I, I don't know, maybe we're all in a grants, we're all level-headed. Maybe, you know, Twitter's just blowing out of proportion. These people are just a vocal Twitter minority. Always, always blows things out yeah, of proportion. Yeah, it does. It does. But, yeah, I just felt like there was uh, more people are more upset than we are. Yeah, um, people are really upset. But in my opinion, it's just the way the world works. It's the way that it is. It happens with everything. Yeah. Like, I just um, got a new phone because my old one could hardly even run Instagram anymore. You know, time goes on and things advance and the things from ages ago get left behind. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's just the way of the world, isn't it? I've accepted it. No, I like that. That is a great, great way to end that topic. For our final point of call, uh, as I said in the intro again, literally it's probably like two hours now because we've been going for a while. Street Fighter 6 was announced. How exciting is that? There was a countdown on Capcom's website. It was very mysterious. It was. A lot of people did think it was Street Fighter. I saw one person delve into it a bit further and said, that's the middle of the night, Eastern time in the US. So it's at quite a decent time in Japan. It has to be something that mm-hmm. the Japanese care a lot more about than the US, being, yep. being you know, the two video, biggest video game markets. Good insight. Yeah, uh, and therefore their conclusion was a new Street Fighter game. Smart. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just thankful we've got Street Fighter at all. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Sony bailed Capcom out hard and basically financed Street Fighter V, which was why that was an exclusive. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm grateful to Sony for doing that. That's the only reason we've got Street Fighter Six, which leads me to my first question: Do you guys think Street Fighter Six is going to be a Sony exclusive? Mm. Uh, I think not. Hmm? And I say that because these companies are purchasing more and more studios and realistically if sony can because sony is very much more about being exclusive than anybody else Uh like you know nintendo but you know they work to microsoft is not about it (laughs) microsoft is you know they work with nintendo they, they you know they do it a little bit more I'd be more concerned. Just with- because they've got nothing good to be. Wait, what? what was Shots that? Shots fired. <laughs> Everybody duck. Halo Infinite. Yeah, there's, there's no good exclusives. That's Halo the Infinite one that was. Epic. Dude, mm. come on, man. We've had Xbox owners been like, Halo's good for like 20 years. I'm sick of hearing it. What else you got? I nothing. mean, Halo is good, but that's that's the yeah, one got, saving grace. We've got Halo and Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. But- mm. Not Anyways, that's anyway, a whole where I was going with that is I don't think Sony would want to poke the bear. So as in if 
uh, Street Fighter goes exclusive. Too You're many, afraid that too many exclusives. Yeah. The Microsoft might say, you know what, we're going to start doing that too. Oh, sorry. Microsoft does have Starfield coming out supposedly this year. So Bethesda, it's a nice one. Maybe they would want it to be exclusive to boost the sales of the PS in Japan. Mm, oh, you're so because right. That, it's not the most popular console the or anything though, over there. Like, no, yeah. That is also the problem that maybe they so, would be shooting themselves in the foot because yeah, they're not widely available. Yeah, I mean, that's it, that's a very good point. I just think they're so hampered right now with what's going on. That why would you? Right. Yeah, I, I just can't believe they're still, you can't just walk into a shop and get it right now. Well, that honestly blows my mind. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's insane. And the market in Japan is even worse. Mm-hmm. Sony. Because they're not prioritizing it. Yeah. Because it's nowhere near as popular. So why would they? prioritize it and send them there when they could send them to, I don't know, America where everybody's like, gimme, gimme. Yeah. But I feel like it works both ways. It's not pop. The pair, the, like the PlayStation four was popular in Japan. Yeah. The PlayStation five is not popular because it's not there and it's not there because it's not popular. Yeah. Like it's just this it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, it's a hell of a lot more popular than Xbox. Xbox mm-hmm. has never broken into the Japanese market. No. PlayStation was. PlayStation reconfigured their controller buttons in Japan specifically. Circle was select rather than X, and X was back because that's how the Japanese are used to having their controllers. That's the way Nintendo is, you know? Yeah. Uh, A is on the right. So, therefore, Circle was select. Uh, They stopped doing that with PS5 as well, actually. So, I don't know. Was that a little bit of a... A preemptive strike on the Japanese market. Maybe they were just like stuff. Yeah, but I think I think that's a very good point, Laura, that you made with Street Fighter being pushing mm. sales of PS5 in Japan. Look, if they can get them, they would have to follow through with making it available over there. Yes, exactly. But they would be in control of both of those decisions. So I'm sure that whatever one that if they did go with that, then they would as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. The more accessibility to the product. I think that's actually probably the defining factor. If they can get enough units. That is, I reckon that's the, yeah. that would be the decision maker. Yeah, 100%. Mm, interesting, because that, that would sell PlayStations. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, absolutely. It would re, yep. re-energize that market because, look, I'm sure the hype was there when it came out, but it's just not available. People have forgotten about it. Uh, I, again, I'm not in. I'm not in Japan. I don't live there. None of us do. I wish I we're, did. Oh my mm, god. We're just speculating here. We could go to game school. How cool is that? Uh, check out our previous podcast to find out what game Japan school is. is. The best place on earth. Uh, I'm sure interest has lacked recently because it's just not there. Mm. Yeah, this could potentially build it back up. No, you're so right. Mm. Um, I uh, yeah. Time will tell, won't it? That's you guys. Time will both, tell. You guys both put very interesting points into that. You put a lot more thought in than I did. That's why I asked you. I had no idea. Nailed it. But the very small trailer that we got looks really, really good. Yeah, uh, it's it is very not small, much. Isn't it? it was ten seconds at yeah. most. But it not, was there's not much in it for such a big countdown. No, yeah. No, it's just um, it's just the announcement. It's isn't just it? a little taste. Yeah. Uh, it's just the announcement of the game. Coming, I we're gonna hear say it's an appetizer, though. It's before the appetizer. Ah, it's the amuse bouche. <laughs> oh, um, I was trying to think of the word, but there was no way I yeah, would have got there. The amuse bouche of uh announcements, yeah, it is. It's just it's just that little one, that one spoonful of oh, yeah, this meal's gonna be delicious. Mm. It's like when, <laughs> when your boyfriend gets a meal and you're like, oh, Can I have a can I have a chip? and it's that one fry. I always give meal. in, but I'm always upset. <laughs> when you've got this other, hey, that always happens with my mint chocolate stuff. Okay. So don't go there. Well, you know, you get your chips, I get my mint chocolate stuff. It's all good. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> but we are both upset. <laughs> yeah. I want, I want more. Yeah. I agree. Um, but we'll get more, I'm sure, like very soon. Yes. Yeah, summer. That's what I was going to say. Summer this year. Um, Our summer? Which, 
which is our no, it's never our summer. summer. Yeah, it's never our summer when we're talking about video game releases. Unfortunately, it's the northern. Fair very enough. Very confusing for me. It is very confusing living in the southern hemisphere. There is a lot less of us though. Yeah, so they're I like understand. summer, and I'm like, oh, like next week. Yeah, yeah, we're in summer right now. What are <laughs> yeah. you talking about? It is summer 2022. But no, winter. Yes, yeah, they do. Yes, they, I, uh, I wish they would stop doing July. that though. Yeah, it, our market's just. It's so small compared to yeah, but that's the it's, all it's the very hemisphere. easy to say quarter one, isn't it? Yeah, quarter yeah, two, but quarter three. Where does summer lie? Four. It's not. It's like in quarter two and three. You know that period, like. So we're releasing it in quarter three. June, July, August is like quarter three. It's quarter two. Quarter two and three. You know. It's yeah, but they'd have a fair idea. So if they go, okay, we're going to release it in August, let's call it quarter three, whatever whatever it may be. I just think it would be more inclusive and right now they're, they're not being inclusive. They hate us. I but, feel excluded. But, Dan, Australia doesn't exist. It's <laughs> yeah. just a giant conspiracy. I forgot we're all paid actors. Yeah. Yes. To That's... cover up the world's biggest mass murder of all time. Yeah. That is yeah, true. Convict. Um, We're going to lose our jobs because we've just blown our cover we, yes. live on podcast. We're actually all from the UK. Oh, my God. I can't believe that you just – they're going to come Sorry. for us now. Do you understand that? Sorry. They're going to come for us. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, I totally get it. There's, twenty what, 24 million Australians. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely 24 million Australians. We're all here. And there's 324 million US citizens. So, yeah. look, we're 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 plebs in the ocean. Like we're nothing. Oh, but we're absolutely, plebs. absolutely. Uh, Just Bra- plebbing away. Brazil does have a decent video game market. Uh, mm. I think it's somewhat similar to ours, despite their population being far more. Uh, but that comes into accessibility and um, politics, which we don't want to get into here. Uh, so, yeah, there are other markets in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm. But, um, yeah, just yeah, none yeah. as large. Yeah, no, absolutely. I understand. Yeah. But, yeah, I've just got to do a bit of calculation in my head. I'm just not good at that. <laughs> but that sounds like a me problem. Summer means winter. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is confusing. It makes uh, making our content hard sometimes because we want to cater to Australians because we are that, uh, and and New Zealanders, sorry, uh, because we are that. But it uh, is confusing for the rest of the world. So mm. Mm. <laughs> I know I never know what currency to put things in yeah. in our videos. It's like, do we say the Australian dollars or do we say the US dollars or do we just do both? Uh, people will notice that we bounce between the two. I know. Mm. We need yeah, to that's my anyway. problem because I work in Australian, New Zealand, Canada, UK, mm-hmm. and the US. So it's like... Must be I, difficult. Well, when I put out any advertisement or anything like that, I need to use dynamic pricing so that way it automatically changes based on where they are, yep. but that doesn't work all the time. No, nah, doesn't work in videos that we put out either, unfortunately. Yeah. I wish we could do that. That would be cool. Yes. <laughs> one day, maybe. So, yeah, yeah, one it's, day, maybe. It's, let's have a world dollar. Ah, yes. Isn't that the dream? But, yeah, I just wanted to cover Street Fighter quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't really have much more to add uh, apart from the weekend that we're going to find out more in summer. So I guess we'll talk about it then. Yeah. Uh, it's a good series. It's fun. Fighters, I mean, you know, it, it's a fighter. It's one of the OGs, so mm. it's got a. I, I like I like playing uh, Street Fighter Two. I think is the most popular one at arcades these days. I very much enjoy playing that at arcades. Mm. Mm. That was good fun. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll probably pick it up and, and yeah, have a I'm gaze sure about will. it when when that happens, be it uh, Sony exclusive or not. Uh, quickly, before we go, if you are interested in trying out the Horizon series but you don't own a PlayStation, the first game, Horizon Forbidden West, which, as Laura mentioned, is probably a must-play before picking the up the new one. one. Yep. 
So, uh, sorry, Horizon years. Zero Dawn. Yeah. Yeah, oh God, I'm confusing myself already. Horizon <laughs> Zero Dawn, which is a must-play before you play Forbidden West, is available on iDigitalGames.com for a lot less than you will find it anywhere else. It's currently selling on Steam for 75 Australian dollars. Uh, now we're getting into this whole currency yeah. thing again. Aren't we? Uh, it is currently on our digital games for 35, Dan. Yeah, just just uh, yeah. just under 35 dollars. So we yeah. general rule of thumb is uh, 50% less. Whatever, whatever your uh, mm-hmm. currency is, I mean, obviously it depends on the game and all the other mechanics that are involved. Uh, but at the moment, Horizon Zero Dawn is basically 50% cheaper uh, wow. if you're in the US, yeah. Canada, New Zealand, UK, or Australia, mate. And that Shouldn't is the Barbie. complete edition as well. Uh, the uh, Frozen Wilds DLC, which I completed all the side quests in that as well, uh, is extremely worth it. You get to know uh, a lot more about one of the specific tribes that is hanging around um, the map. I guess you would say uh, it is definitely worth playing as well. Uh, I would say that the original is, I would pick that up for a hundred dollars tomorrow if I didn't already own it. So the fact that you can get it for 35 or 30 bit under 34 is honestly a bargain. And if you haven't played it and you have a PC, get on what, it. what are you doing? Like pick, pick it up. It's, it, it's so cheap and it's so worth it. Again, if you if you don't have time, you can smash it out in fifteen to twenty hours. If you do have time, I highly, highly recommend doing all the side quests and learning and meeting all the all the people there is to meet. It's, it's, there's fifty hours there of enjoyment, dude. That is that is cheap enjoyment right there. That is true. Very cheap. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, go check out iDigitalGames.com. Uh, it is yeah. It's a great resource for for all of your digital gaming needs in the countries that Dan mentioned a couple of times now. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess that's a a nice nice way to end it. Nice little plug from Dan. Thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> no worries at all, dude. It's uh, it it is. It, I'm not lying. It's it's just the truth. It's cheaper and why, yeah, that's why, awesome. Why would you not want cheaper stuff? Mm. Are you crazy? You want to pay more for things? <laughs> Come off it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging around with us. It's been lovely chatting with all of you two. Uh, <laughs> I'm, hopefully, it's been lovely for you, the listener, listening to us chatting about the things. world of video games stuff again. And things. Mm, stuff and things. Don't forget to check out some kind of gaming, SUM kind of gaming on Twitch and YouTube. And goodbye. See you next week. Or See you later. See you next week. You'll hear us next week. Yeah. <laughs> Listen <Bye>. next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>